Hi everyone, today we're going to be learning how to make this beautiful fall flag using Americana paints by Decaward and some rubber stamps by Stampendous. So I hope you'll enjoy the video. So for those of you who are going to be painting along with me, you should have your e-packet and then also you should be prepped and have everything base coated according to the instructions in the e-packet. There are step photos, so make sure that you look at your step photos as you're painting along with me. And so let's get started. I began with my rock lawn piece that I had pre-cut and I used my see-through ruler to measure four inches from the top and then I came in and I base coated the two inch span here and I also came in and base coated the three inch span down here. Then I took my identipen and just created a base for it and put a line up over here. Um, and that's just gonna separate the mid area. The background is base coated with light buttermilk. When I added the pumpkin in the stem, what I did was use the identipen and I put the details in because I knew that you'd be able to see through the paint um, because generally the ink will always show through. And so then this is going to give our guidelines without having to transfer all the individual lines. Also the texture, this way it will settle the texture into the stem as we add shades and highlights to it and it won't just look like black lines. So what I'm going to do is I have a masonite board here and I'm going to just roll this over the board, you don't have to have a board, it's just going to give me a little bit of sturdiness because obviously this is like a piece of canvas and so um, it will just slip around on me. The first thing I'm going to do is take my sea sponge and dampen it and I'm putting out just a small amount of sand. I'm going to come in and I'm going to sponge the it to just create some texture in the background to add some interest. So what I'll do, since I've already pre-base coated this, I'm going to just dampen these areas on the outside areas of the pumpkin and the stem. That way, if I get any paint on them, then I can just go ahead and wipe it up really quickly. And I'll keep my damp um, brush right there. So I'm using this side of the um, sponge with the most texture in it. And I'm going to very lightly push it into my sponge and then offload it onto my palette paper and come in and just create some random stipples. This is just creating texture and I'm going to go over by the pumpkin because I've already dampened this. I can just come in with my clean brush and wipe it away. One thing I want to point out too is it's always best to come in to protect our lines that we've put in and just put in a little bit of Scotch Magic Tape and I'll do the same thing above. Okay, so I've pre-dampened that. I've got my dampened clean sponge to the side or clean brush to the side. I'm lightly filling my sponge with sand. And I'm using ever so light of a touch. I'm coming in, I'm not worrying about the sides of the pumpkin because I know that I can come in and clean it up really quick. Same with the stem. I always, now I want to make sure that I don't ruin my sponge because these are um, reusable. So what I'm going to do really quickly is put it in a tub with a little bit of soapy water. If for some reason your sponge has dried paint in it, you can always clean it with rubbing alcohol. I'm taking and I'm putting marigold and the canyon orange and I'm, e I'm going to mix equal amounts. And so what I'm doing is I'm going to mix it completely until it's a new color and it's just a really dull light orange. Now because it has the original uh, base coat color in it, it should lay down really easily. I'm often, asked, I'm often asked, do we begin with our highlight or our shade color? What really makes a difference is where you place the shades and highlights, not which ones you begin with. Sometimes there's reasons to go with the shades first, but in this case, I'm going to be using this dauber, and I'm gonna go into my highlight color, and I'm gonna really work it in on my palette 
working it in so there's not a lot of late, uh, not a lot of paint in the dauber. And this dauber is included in your kit. And so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm doing a dry brush method. Let me show you. I'm using a circular motion. And this just goes in so nice and soft. And I'm covering about two thirds of this. So again, I really put it in my dauber, then I take the paint out. And I always place the dauber where the brightest highlight will be. Then I'm using a circular motion, just as if I had a brush in my hand and doing the dry brushing. And you wanna make sure you don't come in with too much paint, because if you come in with too much paint, what will happen is you will get um, some craters and funny, just some like holes in the paint. So you want to make sure you only have a residue of paint in your brush. And I'm going to come in with just a little bit that's left over my brush. I'm going to come over and do just a couple highlights over here. So I'm going to come back with the same exact color and I'm going to go over these, just building them up. And this time I'm kind of staying inside the first area. Now, one little trick that I've learned that if I go a little bit too far, which I did on this one, I can put the base coat color in and pick that up. And I'm on the left side of this um, dauber. And I'll just come in and jiggle it around. And then that's going to the whole dauber in there. It's going to fade it away. I'm going to load this dauber again and we're going to come in and I'm just hitting the top areas. And again if you get too harsh of an edge you can go back into your base coat color and just soften it a little bit. So this was a combination of marigold and canyon orange and now I'm going just into the marigold and I'm going to keep this nice and light and this is going to just come in the center. I'm using ever so light of a pressure So just these three are going to get it. Okay, so you can see that those highlights are brighter than what was over here. So now I'm going to simply, I've got this tub with dirty, uh, with soapy water in it, and I'll simply put it in here until I'm done painting. If I was not filming this video, I would just rinse it out and wash it and put it to the side. But what's really nice is you can reuse those daubers and they're just really fun tools. They're also wonderful for stamping, as you will see, and um, for doing stencils, which we will also be doing. Okay, so now we're going to go in and we're going to do our first shade. We're going to be putting in some shades and I'm going to be floating. And if you don't know how to float, I have a video which I will put a link on. But essentially I'm side loading my brush and I'm using a three quarter inch brush. And I'm only loading the corner of the brush because I don't really want to have a wide float. Because what we're doing right now is we're just going to be using the ox blood to shade each side within the pumpkin. And I'm going to do the left sides first. Then we'll flip the surface over and we'll do the right sides. We'll make sure we have a nice soft float here. I really like uh, this rock one. It's a really easy surface to paint in. It's smoother than regular canvas. So you could actually 
um, stretch this rack line and create a, a, a canvas to paint on and to frame if you wanted to. Okay, I'm going to make sure I go up and over this area here and up over here. And I am actually I'm on the right side of the lines right now. And I'm creating a nice soft float. A float should oh a float is used to shade your object that you're painting. Um, and it can also be used to highlight. It's just a technique used where the color is um, has gradation to it from full strength paint all the way to water. And again, I'm going to be on the right side of the line. And this is one of the reasons why I wanted the lines in there. I knew that they would pretty much diminish once we started shading them, but it's really nice to have them to, so that we can have some guidance as we're pulling these lines down. Now because this is a big area, every now and then I have to go back and pick up more paint. getting some nice dimension in this pumpkin. And so I'm still going to be on the right side of the line. Now if you would be more comfortable with a half inch brush or even using an angle brush instead of a flat brush, by all means use what you're comfortable with. Now while that's drying, I'm going to put out some honey brown, and I'm using my number two Monza Brown for my creative blending brush. I use these for dry brushing all the time, and let me zoom in. So I've got this loaded with a fair amount of paint, and I am going to just stroke this in in between some of these um, texture lines. This pretty much is full strength paint. I'm just creating some highlights. I'll put some along the edge and a little bit in the background. Now I've already filled in that darkness you're seeing was my um, identipen. And this sets up pretty quick so I'm going to go ahead and reinforce it really quick. And again, this is honey brown. So now as that's drying, what I'm going to do is turn this over and reinforce the other floats to this pumpkin. So I'm flipping it over just so I can pull my paint in the same method as I did the first time. And I'm using ox blood again. This is just our first shade color, and so now I'm going to come in on the other side of these pumpkin sections. So I got a little bit of uh, the sponging on my pumpkin, and I didn't clean it up, but the shade color is taking it away really nicely. Because this is upside down, this is the light set of our pumpkin. I want to keep this as narrow as possible. don't want to let this go too far out. And that line is always going to go through too far.
So all the sections right now I'm training exactly the same. If you notice that I use this little pity pat pull when I float. So when I put in my float, I don't try to make it like perfect the first time. I build layers. A lot of people will use mop brushes as they float and make come in with a little bit of darker value. Um, if that's how you're used to applying your values and your floats, um, this is going to look a little bit soft to you and you are not going to need to use a, um, a mop to clean it up. Everyone has their own style. The way I paint takes a little bit longer because I'm not jumping values. And you can see how both sides are now, these are basically cylinders and so they're curving a, a, um, around a little bit. So we're going to let this dry and we're going to put some shades in to our stem. Got some traditional burnt umber and we're going to go along the side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to chisel pull some dark areas in and I'm mixing them within where the highlights were placed in originally. So if you didn't like your highlights, this should take care of it. And we're creating texture at the same time. I flooded along the edge there and then I just chisel pulled in these areas. And now we're going to come in and I'm going to go right over where my a dentapen, a, a dentapen was. And then we're going to come along the base. Okay, so that should start looking like there's some really cool textures going on. Now at the same time, if I need to, I can come back in with my little number two Monza brush or a number zero. Now what I can do is just come back in and I'm using ever so light of a touch and I'm just going back and forth in some of the highlight areas making sure that these are creating texture in addition to creating the highlight. So I'll go back and forth the one area in the back that should have a little bit of a highlight is right in that upper left hand corner and make sure this blends away. If you wanted to you could also use the um, traditional burnt umber and come in and pull lines this way if you have a hard time using your chisel edge of your brush. Those of you who work with a angle brush, it's kind of hard to use the chisel edge of that. So what we're trying to do is just create a little bit of texture here by going back and forth between our tr traditional burnt umber and our honey brown. So what I'm seeing is some really nice texture and then also we're starting to create form with this. I use the acrylic layering technique and because my shades have dried I can tell that I need to go back in and reinforce them. I'm going to just come in with the same color, which was oxblood, and just make them smooth it a little bit more smooth and even by adding the same color a second time. This is called the acrylic layering technique.
I'm going to take some of the marigold and I'm using my number eight Manzarone and I'm going to just come in and dry brush in a little bit lighter highlight. I'll just stroke it at first and then just use a circular motion to work it out. the light in this area so I just picked up a little bit of my canyon orange and I'm going to just come up in there because I don't want that to, to be the marigold orange and I can come in with our first highlight color and reinforce it a little bit so I like to go back and forth with my colors play with them a little bit so I want the greatest concentration of highlight to be up here and that's why I've come back in with this marigold. Because while these are cylinders, the overall shape of a pumpkin is a sphere. This time I'm going to just go over all the areas where we just floated and I'm just going along the entire bottom. And I'll flip my brush over and I'll do the same thing up at the top. And I'm using soft black. And here I'm going to come in and I'm shading this back side over here. And I'll walk it out just a little bit. And I'll also come in, really make sure we have some nice darkness here. Come in and clean up my edges here. And then just use a little chisel pull that's going to create some more texture to the stem. Overall I'm seeing some nice contour here, but what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to dampen this area. What I want to do is I just want to darken the side a little bit, and so we're going to use some of the rock wood. And I'm going to really work it in my brush. This is going to be more like a glaze, which is a transparent application. And I'm just walking it out. When I walk out my brush, and this again is a more advanced technique. I lean my brush a little bit towards the water end, lightening the load on the paint end. But you can see how just by adding a little bit of color in here, it's a little bit darker. And then we're going to come on the bottom and shade underneath here with the rope wood too. kit you got the stamp set and as you can see it indicates this is a free stencil in it and the stencil is this smart mylar and um, what I've done is I've gone in and I've marked um, up on all of the stencils so that you can see where they're at but they also come in with these little masks so you don't want to lose the mask because we'll be using these and they're very clear. So if you want to mark on it, you can write the word mask. Um, I leave mine dirty so you can see mine have a lot of um, colorization on them. And I do that on purpose because then that way they're harder to lose. But we're going to be using the stencil portion. Now I've got my mask and I'm going to put it right over on the side. So because we have a small area over here, if you want to make sure that you're not going to go outside of the area, you can come in with tape and, 
and tape these in. I'm going to just try to be very careful. I'm going to work with my small dauber. And I also want to I also want to point out something before we begin. Is the reason I marked them is so that I know like the word up would be backwards. If you use your stencil incorrectly, what's going to happen is you're not going to be able to stamp on it. So we want it to be able to stamp on here and I want to make it look like this particular flower is coming out in front. So I'm going to place this right about here. And we're going to use our marigold. Now my little dauber is wet. And um, if you're at home doing this, clean your dauber um, after you're done using it and allow it to dry because it's a lot easier to use that way. But what I like about these daubers is they're wonderful to use with stencils because you don't have a lot of extra paint and they tend not to then bleed out. So I'm going to just daub over here and this may take a couple, uh, a couple, a couple coats because this is yellow. As a matter of fact, I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to first use sand, let it dry, and then come in and go over it with my marigold. Otherwise, we will have too many coats. So you can see the sand is going to cover right over this orange. I want to make sure I don't use too much paint because it will bleed. So I always start in the center and then work out towards the outside. And I have a mixture of sand and marigold in my dauber. Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm going to come over here. We're going to lift up the tape. Then I'm going to have this flower over here. So we're going to use that same mixture. I want to make sure that my lettering spills up. So I've got my, but what I've done is I've turned the perspective of the flower. Make sure you don't have too much paint in your brush. You want to have a fair amount to begin with, but then as you move off to the sides, it's going to diminish so that it doesn't bleed underneath. And I'm going to bring this up and over our edge. Okay, and then I'm going to line up the stencil again over here. And you want to make sure that it is exact so that you don't have any gaps. And then this time I'm going to come in with my full strength marigold. I'm going to give this flower a little bit of time to dry. And we're going to come in and we're going to use our stencil. Okay, so once I get the, the stencil on a, a little angle, um, the, I've got my tape up over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tape it on the side here because I cut these stencils in half. And I want to make sure that I'm not going to be getting any paint outside of the stencil. So if you come in and tape it, it works really well. So I'm just reinforcing up above it. So I'm not going to worry about this edge. It was this edge that I was a little bit of worried about. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking my large dauber and I'm loading it with paint. And then I really work it in and make sure that I'm really working it in. So I have full strength paint in here and I'm really working it in. If I have puddles like that, I'll come over to my paper towel and really work it in. So now it looks like a stamp pad. So I, what I can do now is I hold my stencil down and I can just go over and I'm using a pouncing motion up and down and because the dauber is made with a sponge, a high density sponge, it's wonderful to use these for the stencils because generally it won't bleed underneath um, because 
it's helping you uh, maintain a consistent moisture within the dauber as opposed to a brush you can really overload. Okay, then we're going to lift that up and see how nice and clean and neat that is. Okay, so let's go back over to this flower over here. While that's drying, I want to come in with my smaller dauber and put another coat of paint on here. So we're going to line this up perfectly so that we don't have any gaps from last time. And I'm using Full Strength Marigold again. And coming in and just putting a second coat coverage down. Now that black marker is going to show through. There's not much I can do about that, but as I add layers, it's going to diminish and we should be able to see it too much. So now I'm going to take my mask and I'm going to put it over the flower down here and take that in position. And I'm going to add my second flower over here. And so I'll go back into my smaller dauber, start in the center. Now, because it's the same color, I could have just left the mask off, but I wanted to show you how the mask works. So essentially then, that flower has been untouched by this. We'll do the same thing up here. I'm going to cover this up. I like for the three petals and that kind of helps me know how to set this down. I've not cleaned out my dauber, so what I have to do is load it twice. And I've got the leaf right here. Oh, that's covering really good. I might need to hit that a second time. Okay, and the other leaf I'm putting over here. I'm going to put the mask on this flower. Then I also have the mask over here for this flower. Okay, and I'm going to use the curly leaf and put that right there using the same color. Well, that's drying. We're going to go back up here. Because this color is already there and I know the placement, I'm going to just take my number eight round dome brush and fill this in, give me a little bit more color. Just the areas that have the orange underneath that really need it. I've taken the two leaves out of the collection and placed them so that they're going to complement each other. One goes this way, the other one goes that way. We're also going to be using the smallest sponge that I included in the kit and I've dampened it so there's no drips coming out of it, it's just damp. And I'm going to be using Camel Paint. You can use either edge of the sponge and you're going to load it just like you did the dauber where you load it and then offload it. And so that you have the sponge looking like a stamp pad so there's no globs of paint on it at all. And I'm going to very quickly take and stamp over the or sponge over the leaves and then I'll place these down and this is just going to give us some additional texture in the background. I'm going to leave the placement of the stamps exactly as they are and then I'll flip them upside down so that and put them and put them on an angle and I press down I don't rock my hand
So that's just going to give us a really pretty pattern in the background, and I'm going to continue this until it's done. Now I have some thin traditional burnt umber, and I want to indicate that we have some uh, little veins. Okay, and I've got just a little bit of honey brown in here so that as they pull in front of the pumpkin stem that they will um, show up a little bit more. Flowers are not done yet. I'm going to pull just a few coming out over here. I'm not going to bother stamping the leaves because I'm going to just come in and shade them. I don't think we need those. Since I'm approaching this more like um, whimsy realism, if I were to just leave them base coated, I could come in and stamp them with black and then just be on my way. But because I want this to be dimensional, what I'm going to do is just come in and, and shade shade those. But now we're going to come in and we're going to stamp giving the we're going to stamp the flower giving it um, the its lines. And so I'm not going to use black like um, most people would. I'm coming in with the honey brown because I just want some light indication of lines. And it is hard to over stamp once you've put this down. And so if I come off to the side a little bit, it will make it a little bit easier. So what I'm doing is I'm looking for those three petals. And I'm purposely going to come in and I'm going to try to just set this off a little bit and press down. Okay, well I'm liking what I'm seeing really well. I'm just off a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just um, work with what I have. I can take my number eight brush and very quickly just get rid of some of the very bottoms of the lines. Or I could leave them and say I have more petals. But in this case, because it lined up fairly well, I'm going to just go with what I have. I have a little um, brush, um, it's a flat brush, and I'm going to open it up so that it's nice and full. And I'm going to use some traditional burnt dumper and just very lightly stipple the center in. I'm leaving a little bit of the background show through because I'm going to add some highlights. I'm going to use some of the marigold and sand mixture and I'm thinning the paint with just a little bit of water and then I'm going to just pull using my number three uh, this is number three round I'm just pulling some highlights right over those lines and that's why I said it really doesn't matter that those lines were there it's just an indication of where we want to go I look at what I have just pulling a few highlights. I'm 
I'm going to take some of my Canyon Orange that I've thinned with a little bit of water and I'm going to just pull some shades. And this again is going to create some pretty texture. these we lost our marigolds so I can just go in and stroke a little bit in. And then I'm going to just take and put some dots of marigold in the center. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to just float the shade right next to um, the flower. Then we'll come around the outside edge, and then I flip my brush over, indicating that this is rolled over. And then I'm going to just pull a float down the middle. So again, I'm coming behind the flower. Now with this one, I will just come in and float down the center because it does not have Clean up my edges a little bit there. Clean up that a little bit. This one does not have a fold like that one does. So essentially I shade right behind the flower and then down in the middle. Then we're going to come in and we're going to stamp this flower and so I put the mask down here. So I'm going to use my dabber and I'm using Roke Wood Red. And again, I try very carefully to line this up and it helps to have a clean, it helps to have a clean handle. Mine has a lot of paint on it. So you can see I stamped that. Now I can take my mask off and you can see that that's underneath. I'm going to take some country red and put it in here, about a drop of it. Then I'm going to add some water to it, and we're going to create a, a wash. I'm going to take my palette knife, and I'm just mixing the color, and then I'll mix it with my number eight round to make sure that it's really mixed all the way through. And so I'm going to use a number six, Mons around. I'll need paper towel to blot my brush. And I'm going to just wash in color. This is in the outer area of the petals. This area will remain the gold color. Then I'm going to go into Roke Red Red and stipple the center of this flower. I have some thinned country red and I'm going to just pull some lines and they should diminish fairly well because this is still wet. And they're just going to blend out a little bit. Also take a little bit of my marigold and just pull a few marigold along the tips. I'm going to stipple the number three round in the center here. 
I'm going to take just a little bit of that traditional burnt umber and put it in the center. While the traditional burnt umber is in my hand, I'm going to just go underneath here and create a little bit of a shadow. Okay, I think this is looking pretty good. I've now taken it off the board and I want to talk about how I dress the top. All I do is fold it over like this and make sure that it's nice and straight. And if your two sides meet, it should straight. And then I'm going to just run a small amount of glue down this edge because I'm planning on painting a Christmas scene on the other side. Um, so if I run just a bead of glue down the edge and let it dry for 24 hours, then what I'll do is come in and just add two stitches on both sides to secure it. After looking at this, I decided I wanted to dampen it and just bring in a little bit more of the Marigold highlights. And this will tie in some of our pretty yellows from the flowers. By now doing a back-to-back -back float over here, because we've already put the marigold in, what's going to happen is it's just going to brighten it up a little bit. I've decided I want the leads, leaves to stand out a little bit more in the background. So what I've done is create a wash of camel. And I'm going to come in and just wash in all of the leaves. This is going to be very transparent. I used a lot of water. So you can see that even though I use camel to stamp with, this color is going to be a lot lighter because I've thinned it with so much water. It will still remain in the background, but just add a little bit more interest. So this is what the background looks like with all of the leaves filled in. I like it because it's still laying in the background. Um, but it's adding a lot more interest, just putting the wash of color in those leaves. And I think I want to add a little bit more interest to these leaves too. I'm going to take some marigold and I'm going to just add a little bit of marigold to parts of the leaves. And I'm floating this. It's just going to make it a little bit more bright and light put a little bit on this edge too. And that really pops that up. And I'm going to come on the outside edge of, of this leaf too. I'm going to use the back end of my um, number eight brush. And I've got Rokewood Red. And I'm going to make some berries just by making little circles. I also have some tomato red and I'll mix the two together as I come out into the lighter areas. The rokewood will go into the darker areas and then the combination of rokewood and tomato red will come over here but I just thought it would be really pretty to make some berries. The rokewood and red combination goes comes into the lighter areas. And the rokewood will just stay in the dark area. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to mix colors in the dark area where they're going to just lightly show. Now I'm in straight tomato red. And let's see. Just a couple over here. Now I have some thinned um, traditional burnt umber and I'm just going to pull some lines up so that these berries are connected.
maybe I'll just add a few branches. I'm not going to add any shades to the berries. I'm going to just come in and tap in a little highlight of sand to them. If your berries need a little bit more definition, just take on the dark side, use your Adenta pen and come in and make a little C. Overall, I think this turned out really great. It's super easy to do and really quick also. And that's what we want when you're at Womo we're recreating um, something that we're going to be using outside. What I'll do is I'll come in and I'll use some matte outdoor varnish um, to put over this to try to help keep the colors from um, becoming light fast or um, harmed from the elements. I want to thank you so much for joining me and if you enjoy this video please give me a thumbs up and also subscribe so that you will be notified every time I post a video to my YouTube channel.